All right, I'm not going to say hello to everyone individually, even though I like to, because I know you guys have made the effort to pop on and say hi, and I like to say hi back to you personally. But I'm going to say hello, everyone. Welcome to everyone. And uh, let's get going. It is Friday night again. I'm sitting here with the heater on because uh, for anyone who's watching from overseas, it is winter in Australia. So it's kind of cool. Um, although, you know, my husband keeps reminding me that this is not cold. We don't know what cold is. And he comes from Michigan and they have like snow that can cover your house sometimes there. So he would know. <laughs> ah, All right. Um, I will turn this camera around and let's make something fun. All right. Here we go. All right. Now I've got a new phone and I'm. One of my problems is I keep on accidentally pressing the off button when I switch it around. So I'm trying very carefully not to do that because that's not ideal for doing a video when you turn your phone off. All right, let's get this better positioned. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay, everyone good? Hey, Linda. Gosh, we've got all the hunter girls there. We've got Louise, we've got Kay, we've got Linda. Nice to see you girls. Long time no see. <laughs> All right, so I thought tonight we might have a play with something that I've kind of, um, and for anyone who's been watching, I've kind of fallen in love with this particular suite. It's called You're a Peach. It's here on page 60, this one, and it's got the peaches and there's some little flowers in there too. Um, there's a whole suite, okay, so you can actually get everything all together. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the suites in this catalogue are a really good price. They've actually taken they aren't putting as much in the suite which allows them to offer it at a smaller price but you get a still get a whole bunch of coordinating products so this one the whole suite which is the stamps the dies the jars the jars are super cute guys and the beautiful dsp all of that together is $99.50 which is a great price for a suite right so it's really really cool there's some beautiful samples here I love the colours, just love the colours in this suite. I know, the paper is divine, it's so beautiful. So I'm going to move that out of the way and I'm going to show you the paper first before we start because I just want you, you to get a feel for the colours and the really the stars of the show in, the, in here are coral and blue. Okay, so the blue they've used is balmy blue. You can see I've been chopping mine up and having lots of fun. And so there's a blue background here. There's the coral. But there's also, if you look in there, there's two colours. There's the fresh, um, sorry, the a pale papaya, which is one of the new colours, the in colour, that's this one, this colour. And then the Calypso coral, which is the darker coral. The background is balmy blue and the leaves are tones of pear pizzazz, okay? So they're the main colours in it. And, of course, there's white in here as well. There's white in the background, like white in the dots and so forth. There's stripes, there's dots. Um, and there's kind of a watercolour look to a lot of the stripes, which are really, really nice. And then we've also got on the back of this one, we have some blossoms in uh, coral and the papaya. There's more of the dotty one. I really like, I really love dots and stripes. So this paper is really me, not only the colours, but the designs as well. And then we've got the, pe the peaches and there's some blossoms in there as well on a white background. And there's just lots of little tiny weeny peaches, which are really pretty. That's really cute. And I think we looked at the back of that one. Yep, that one was the blue. This one is, we haven't seen that one. That's the pear pizzazz, kind of a watercolory kind of a look. And on the back, it's got some pretty blossoms with, the, with all of the colours in this paper. And then we've got some little sprigs, more of the stripes, more blossoms. We've seen that one. This is nice, just a white background, really, really simple. That's the coral, and we've seen that one. And there we go, that's all the papers. So there's two sheets of each, so there's a total of 12, 12 sheets in a pack. And it's the standard um, standard pack, so it's $20. And I really think these are beautiful. It reminds me of growing up, we had peach orchards when I was little, so I used to love peaches. Um, I just, I, yeah, I just... It, everything about this suite is kind of me. So here are the, the stamps and the dies. And I thought we might make a card that I posted earlier today. Some of you may have seen it. Did anyone happen to look? 
can see the card. I really, really like this card. It turned out so nice. So it's this one. Um, and it's just in really pretty, um, the, the blue with a little bit of the little bit of soft colours, green. Oh, I've got some vellum in here as well. And I thought I'd quickly show you how I made it. Okay. So let me go back and refresh. And if anyone does say anything that they would like me to answer questions or anything like that, please do keep posting the comments, even though um, I may not see it straight away. Okay, all right, so let's go with this one. I've got the pieces ready to go. I've got a piece of basic white thick. Now, I usually use the thicker cardstock. We have very vanilla in the thick and we have basic white in the thick. Um, and I use these a lot for card bases. So if you're wondering what kind of paper to use for card bases, you can use any cardstock. But I do find that the basic white, the normal basic white, not the thick one, but the normal one, is a little bit flimsy and the same with the vanilla just a tiny bit flimsy for card bases so I prefer the thick for that so and it's also a little bit cheaper than the regular cardstock price so it's a good way to go if you're looking for a good card base materials just going to use my bone folder to flatten it over now I've already cut these to size this is eight centimeters by 12 and this is half a centimetre smaller, so seven and a half by eleven and a half. And I'm going to pop that together first. I mean, both sides are pretty, aren't they? I like the other side too. This is the kind of paper that it, it, both sides are so pretty that it's hard to choose which side to use. So what did I do? The easy way to solve that problem is buy another pack. <laughs> then you haven't got to decide between them. You can use them both. All right. So this is ready to go. This is going to end up here in the middle. I quite often use 8 centimetre by 12 centimetre pieces if I want to have a panel in the middle of a piece of basic uh, basic white um, card base. So if you remember, 8 centimetres by 12 centimetres is going to be exactly the right size to fit and leave a little bit of a border all the way around. And I find that quite a useful size. All right. So... What I did with the front here, I've got a couple of different things. I have a vellum circle, which I've already got here. And this is actually quite an important part of this card. The card wouldn't look nearly as nice without this. You could use a white circle underneath and that would still be nice. But what I did with my vellum circle was I actually sponged, used one of our beautiful blending brushes and I sponged this with Misty Moonlight ink. So I've got a combination of Balmy Blue and Misty Moonlight when I come to my blues on this card. So I've got Balmy Blue as my base. And hey there, Katrina. Hi there. Hi, Denise. Nice to see you. You like the vellum, Michelle? Me too. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm actually going to start by holding onto the very, very center, the very, very edge here with my fingers just to hold it down. And I'm going to sponge around and around to create just a nice bit of colour in the centre. Okay, I'll do this, see if it works. You might be able to see it better here. All right, and I might do a second layer just to get a little bit more colour. And I'm just going to, whoop. So I end up with a bit of um, colour underneath, which doesn't look like a whole lot when you put it against a darker colour, but when it's went against a lighter colour, or even against this, you can see it comes up really, really nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to, I know the blending brushes are the best, Judy. I agree. These are, I think, some of the best products we've ever had. <laughs> really, really very, very special. All right. See, I keep saying I'm not going to individually say hello to everybody, but I can't help myself. It just seems to happen. All right. So then we've got all the flowery bits here. I'll put this vellum piece to the side for now. And I've also got a little bit of a little bit of a greeting here. Let's start with our, our flowers, and I've just got some um, some white scrap. This is just basic white cardstock. Not even it's not the thick stuff. It's just the normal stuff. And I still find, even though this isn't great, um, it's not sturdy enough for card bases. It's still the best thing for stamping on because it's so smooth. It's really really good. So. I've already got the um, the stamps out that I want to use, but I'll just show you in the pack. I'm using this one here, 
And you might see it looks a bit funny because it's kind of got these gaps here and the gaps are actually where the peaches will go or the flowers will go if you're using the flowers. And you can see I've used the flowers in this one, but I could have used the peaches if I wanted to, but I wanted the flowers just for a change. So I'm going to start by stamping the leaves and you can see they're here on the block. And I decided to use soft succulent for this because it's kind of um, more of a neutral green. It's not a yellow green. It's a little bit probably more towards a blue, but it's not seriously blue either. It's kind of, it's quite neutral. I like it. So um, I'm actually going to stamp it. You can see it's quite dark. And then let's stamp it off and see if that gives me a softer colour. Yeah, I think I like that better. Now you can have, we'll have two because this one is the full strength and this one is going to be stamped off. So just so we can compare the two and see how they look. Okay, so that's one stamp. Then I've also got my little flowers here. I might as well do them all at the same time. Now, for these, I ink them up in the pale papaya. Make sure I've got plenty of, of that on there. And then I got my Misty Moonlight. Okay. Oh, yep, that, that is the Misty Moonlight. Just checking. And a, a sponge dauber. And I'm actually going to go around the edges of my flowers with this dauber. Only the very edges though. So I don't want to cover the whole thing. I want it to still have the peach coloured centre, but I want it to be blue on the ends. All right, that looks good. And then we'll just stamp that. And can you see how that comes out? It's kind of got, um, oh, I hope that you can see it. I know the peaches are beautiful. They really are. They're lovely. All right, can you see it? That's what I want to see. That it's not, they've got the middle is the peach and the outside is the blue. All right, just, just for something different. I mean, I could have just stamped them in blue, but there is quite a lot of blue on this already. And I like the fact that you've got a bit of a peachy look to the center of these flowers. All right. Am I missing any questions? I'm sorry if I'm missing any comments. Um, yeah, it, it's funny. It wasn't the set that jumped out at me straight away, this set. And I noticed a couple of you saying it's growing on you. <laughs> um, that's that's exactly right. It's one of those sets that's what I would call a sleeper. We have them sometimes where, you know, they don't grab everyone's attention straight away. But once you start to see them used and you start to see how lovely they are, it's a different story. So, and that's why I guess they have demonstrators to show people what they have missed previously. All right, so I have the peach dies. Here they are. Let me pull these out. And we have this little guy here, which is going to do this one. And I've also got the flowers. Now, the good thing about these is I think they've thought about it so that it doesn't make it tricky for people to line up. These, this one is really easy to line up. It's quite straightforward. This one, one flower is smaller than the other two, so that makes it really easy to line that up as well. And with the peaches, one peach is pointy. It has a pointy kind of a heart shape and the other two are rounder, so that makes it easy as well. So they're really easy to line up, these guys. I don't know if they did that on purpose or if it was just how it worked out. Now, I'm using my mini cut and emboss machine for this. Um, I'm a big fan of this machine. I just think it's pretty cool and it works really well on my desk. And in case anyone hasn't um, noticed, I have a new desk, which means it doesn't wobble all over the place when I'm using my cut and emboss machine, and I'm pretty happy about that. All right. So I'm going to do one of these at a time because it's, it's terrible when you, it's, you know, like the old thing, you know, chase two rabbits, catch none. <laughs> um, if I do one at a time, I'm more likely to get, get it right. So I'm just going to position this so it's lined up at the end. I did a presentation earlier and my, the crux of my message was done is better than perfect. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. It really doesn't matter. Now it's going to go through. I just needed to turn it up the other way. All right, that's better. All right, 
So you can see I've got this one cut out. And now I'm going to cut out the other one. Pop that down. There you go, like a dream now. Just had to have it. I just had it turned upside down. I had it the wrong way in. And that's okay. All right, you can see I've got my little flowers there. They're all ready to go. And let's move this. All right, so let's see what we've got here. We've got this lovely little bit of leaves. We've got some little flowers. And we have a vellum circle with blue on it, misty moonlight to be precise. Now, I have found that when you're trying to stick stuff on vellum, especially if you've used ink on it, um, it can be harder for um, dimensionals to stick to. So I like to use Tombow is my preference for something small like this. Um, glue dots also work really well on vellum normally but but when you um when you have um ink on it or if you've used um over the back of it that chalky chalky residue or pastels or something like that um you may find that tombow works better for you all right oh. all right so i've got it so it's kind of just going over the edge a little bit like that and off here and just kind of make sure push it down make sure it's going to stay all right now I've got my little flowers I am going to use dimensionals on those so you can use uh, full-size dimensionals you can use mini dimensionals it really doesn't matter I've got some full-size ones right here so I'm just going to turn these around and put my dimensionals on the back Kay and Linda, I was thinking um, we could even do this card maybe at class next month. I'll see. But if you, you may have decided, may, by then I might have some other lovely things to show you instead. We'll see. It is a nice card though. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the little flowers into the gaps, which is what this branch is meant to do. Can you see that? Looks pretty. It's very nice. But it needs something, don't you think? I've got some champagne rhinestones that I think are perfect for this. So I'm going to pop one of the medium-sized ones here on the big one. They're really cute, aren't they? And then I've got a couple more here. I think the champagne rhinestones are lovely. we go you could also use another option for these would be the in color gems you know some of these um, either you could go with the soft succulent or the evening evergreen would look nice or the um the pale papaya would also look nice so those would be nice in the center of these as well Oops. all right now how are we going to stick this on let's go ahead and i want to show you how this is going to come together i'm going to put this bit on first so, all right, where did I put my dimensionals? I just had them, literally just had them. Where did they go? Really? How can I lose something that fast, guys? Oh, you should be used to me by now. Never mind, I'll get another packet. Thankfully, I have more close at hand. It's not really a problem to have a couple of sheets going at once. I put up a quote a week or two ago and a lot of people really liked it saying um, that, <laughs> that they, um, they agreed or related to the sentiment, you know, that crafting is basically a search, a scavenger hunt for the item that you just had in your hand a moment ago. Yep, that's exactly right. All right, so how are we going to attach this to this? 
in a way that we don't see through the vellum, okay? Because I want to put that down the bottom here and have it slightly. I mean, I could put it in the middle, but I like it slightly to the side. And as you can see, I did that here on this one. It's slightly over the edge. So how are we going to do it? Well, because we've put these here, that actually gives us a great place to put more dimensionals. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put them behind these flowers because no one's going to see. And I'm going to put one here and one here. So I'm not going to worry about having any out here. That will be enough to hold it. Uh, and the question, do I have in-person classes? I sure do. I run them here from my home studio. Um, the other thing I do is I do online classes as well. So, um, and I usually run those in, either in about the fourth week of the month. There should be one coming up next week. So I haven't decided yet um, what day that will come out, but I will announce it when it does. All right, so then I've got this little piece here. And what I wanted was to have this piece go kind of in under here and pop out here. All right, so let's put our stamp. Now I'm going to use the Misty Moonlight. I could also use the Soft Succulent. Either one would be fine, but I am going to use the Misty Moonlight. And the stamp that I've got is from the same set, and it's this one that says, To a Sweet Friend. You could also have Let's Celebrate You or It's Your Day. If I wanted to have a slightly big, bigger strip of paper, I could have the Happy Birthday or the Thanks So Much. But I'm going with the small strip. And I've got to a sweet friend. And I think that's really nice. It's such, it's really nice sentiment. Sorry, I'm going to have to bring my head in just to line this up. My apologies for that for a second. Because I want it to be straight. Let's see how I went. Did I do it? Yes, that's pretty good. All right. So I've left a little bit here to slide underneath. I'm actually going to put a bit of, um, actually I probably should have, inked around it first but that's okay I'm going to grab my scissors and I want this to be a little bit beyond the word friend make sure it's straight now who's being fussy hey and then I've got some ink still left on this from when we sponged around the um the vellum no what do we sponge oh around the flowers Whoop. when we were stamping those all right, so just those three sides. And then I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to lift this up a tiny bit, just at the edges where I can. And we're going to hide that end under here. And that's just going to pop out there and sit just like that. You could add a ribbon to it if you really wanted to, like maybe um, a white seam binding ribbon down the bottom here. That would be quite pretty. But you probably don't really need to. See, now I have two almost identical cards. One has the darker green leaves and one has the lighter green leaves. Which one do you think you like the best? Off to the left for dimensionals. Yeah, they'll show up. As soon as I'm not making this video anymore, they'll be right there. Because <laughs> that's just how it works, you know. So... Or sometimes I find things by watching the replay and seeing where I actually put it. That I've found a number of things by doing that. Yeah, I like them both. I think I like that this is a little bit softer, but I, I do like the, the stronger green as well. Anyway, there you go. We have a card. I'll post, I've will i already posted this card on my Instagram page today, so I don't need to post it again. I thought we might do one more. What do you guys think? Are you up for another one? Yes. Okay, that's a yes for you. All right. Well, Kay, you've already seen the card I'm going to do because I'm going to actually do – I had some leftover bits from one of the cards we had, we made on Wednesday. So I hope I won't bore you by doing it again. <laughs> I thought we might make this one. And I'll um, bring in the actual cards so you can see them. So quite often on my, um, my Wednesday group, um, we do once a month up in the Hunter Valley – and um, Louise, I don't know if Louise is still here, but Louise was watching earlier. It's actually Louise's cafe. She has a beautiful cafe at the Colburn called Taste of the Country. And once a month I go up there and we spend a full day making cards, which is lovely. So this is the card I'm going to make now. This is actually a really simple card, super, super simple. But I think it's really pretty. Um, it turned out really, really nicely. You can see two versions of the same card. One uses the Blushing Bride specialty paper. 
and this other one uses the Sahara Sand specialty paper. So they're both really pretty and I could have gone with either one. Um, I could still change that. If uh, Are you still watching, Louise? That's nice. Um, so, you know, if we were having the Blushing Bride, it would just be that on this piece of black. And if we're doing Sahara Sand, it's this one. Does anyone have a preference? First person to comment, I will um, we'll do that colour. So do you want the Blushing Bride or the Sahara Sand? Any preferences, guys? It's not much different, really, but they're two of the colours that are in our specialty paper. Oh, I think Judy's first. And look, Katrina had the same one as well. So you guys are after the Blushing Bride, so that's the one we're going to have. Um, interestingly, on Wednesday in class, um, some of the girls, most of the girls were happy, but I had two girls that wanted colours other than the ones that they want. Kay, who's here, and um, and Jenny. And the two of them I, I just swapped what they had. So it was like the chicken or the fish at the wedding, wasn't it, really? All right, so I'm starting with a piece of Sahara sand. I'm going to quickly show you this paper because it's retiring and it is absolutely beautiful. It's this paper here. Um, it's called the Love You Always Specialty Designer Series paper. Now, pretty much everything, nearly everything on this page is retiring. These stamp set and dies, those ones are not retiring, but nearly everything else is. So the um, the Love You Always, sorry, Forever and Always stamp set, which is actually over the page here, this one, that's retiring, and the matching dies, those are all retiring. Um, also, um, the foils are retiring, the DSP is retiring, and the specialty paper is retiring. So um, there's lots of things. I'm not sure about these guys, but I'm pretty sure the metallic ribbon, the blushing bride, I think that one was staying from memory. So, all right, well, it seems there's a lot of people who are happy to have the blushing bride. I'm sorry, Kay, you missed out because I know you would have liked the other one. All right, let me move these out of the way. This is... Um, Sahara sand, a piece of Sahara sand cardstock cut in half and then I'm folding it in half again to make my card base. So this is such a fast card. You'll be amazed how quickly I can do this. So I'm just going to use some seal to attach the blushing bride piece. Isn't it pretty? It's got such a nice shine to it. I love this paper and it will be sad. I think it'd be nice for weddings a very wedding me kind of a paper. All right, now this is going to end up on my card. So it is a landscape-shaped card. It's going to end up on my card like this, okay? Now I've already cut this piece. This is from the, is it Tasteful Labels? I think it is, um, set of dies. And the Always is actually from the matching bundle, this, this particular bundle, this um, Love You Always bundle. So... Um, you can use the always by itself, or you could use one of the other words in the set. And the set is right here. So you could have always forever and always, or always together, or you could use the word love, love you more. The only thing is always is one big die. The love is the L is and OVE are all on one die, but that when they cut out, the L is separate to the OVE which actually I found quite useful because I can use the L as a monogram for my name, but I know not everybody can do that. <laughs> so uh, so there you go. All right, so I am actually going to get my um, D block and I'm going to use the big flower from this set. And we're going to pop that here. What's everyone doing for the weekend? Have, has anyone got plans? Anything exciting? I'm going out to dinner at a friend's house tomorrow night and I'm really looking forward to it. It's been a while since we've seen them and it's going to be lovely. All right, there's a little bit of paper on top of that. All right, so I'm going to ink this up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this here where it's going to finish up. And I want my flower to come out just past that. So it's kind of just I'm having it facing up. It's just past the halfway mark. I'm going to move my paper out of the way and I'm going to stamp. Just like that. Can you see that? So I've got my stamp here. And then I want another one down here in the corner. So I'm going to ink it up again. And I'm going to bring this right down and stamp it in the corner. 
because what I want is for this piece to come across here, I want to be able to see the top of my flower and the bottom of this one sort of popping out down in the corner. So this is going to go down. See, I told you this is a super easy card. This is one of the reasons we finished a little bit early on Wednesday because we had more time to, to look at the catalogue and have our afternoon tea. It was lovely um, because this card was so quick and easy. And we had a smaller group on Wednesday than, than we sometimes do. So we had only nine. So I'm going to put the always on with Tombow. I find Tombow really great like we did before. It's great with a, um, with a thinner shape. And all I need to do is just apply a little bit here and there. So you don't need to cover the whole thing, but you do want to have the Tombow kind of on the outside piece. Anything that might flap or move around, you want to have it on those pieces. So I put it on the very bottom bits and also the very top. Here we go. Okay. Just like that. There we go. All right, so that will just take a moment to dry. Um, the good thing about Tombow, it goes on white, but it dries clear, so it's actually really easy to work with. Um, now, while we're waiting for that to dry, the other thing I did was I used some of the um, metallic ribbon. And this ribbon is absolutely beautiful. It's Blushing Bride Metallic. And, of course, at this moment, I'm having trouble getting it out of the box. There are other options too. If you can't, if you don't have this particular ribbon, you could also use, um, and I mentioned it before, I just realised I've got a couple of these. You could use, and maybe I'll do it a different colour. So this is this is the metallic ribbon that we've used on um, on the original one. But I've also got some of this lovely seam binding ribbon. Now, what I love about seam binding ribbon is it's soft, it's easy to tie, and because it's white, you can make it any colour you like. So, you know, I can make a white ribbon, and it's really, like you'll see, it's very simple and soft to tie with. Look at that. It's so easy. Now, if you're not a ribbon tyer, there are other alternatives, and you don't have to use ribbons. I'm a big fan of ribbons, but I mean, that is quite pretty, but there's no white anywhere else on the project. So it's kind of, it kind of looks like it doesn't quite belong, if that makes sense. So I'm looking at my blends markers. So I've got a couple of choices. I can use, I can use the sponge dauber and actually sponge, um, sponge along in whatever color. So I could do the blushing bride. That would work quite well, or I could use a marker. That also works quite well. Or I can use blends. Blends are the quickest and easiest way, but I actually don't have Blushing Bride in markers. I have Petal Pink, but that's not the same. It's a different pink. It's more of an apricot colour. So let's just see if I can do this with my normal stamp and write marker, and I'm pretty sure I should be able to. These are water-based. These are exactly the same ink as what is in an ink pad. So I'm just going to hold it still. But you'll find blends are quicker and easier because they they spread. Now, if I only do one side, that kind of sometimes gives you a nice look because it kind of gives you a two-tone. But it does, this ribbon, you pretty much go straight through. <laughs> it's, so, um, it's so fine that it doesn't really matter if you only do one side. All right, so that should be enough. Let me just tie that and see how we go so this would be an alternative actually now i'm going to need a bit more this will be an alternative if you don't have blends in the color which i don't i mean i could do the petal pink but i really don't know that that it will look the way i want it to look 
If I wanted to, I could also go up to a darker colour. Now, Rococo Rose was also in this paper pack, and that was really pretty, but that colour has retired. But if you have Rococo Rose, that actually works with this quite well. If you wanted to go with a brighter pink, pink you could pick Flirty Flamingo as well. All right, but see how that one's fairly close. Let's tie it. I like my... Um, my ribbon to be quite small. Did I bring my ribbon scissors over? No, I didn't. Well, that was silly. Thankfully, this ribbon cuts easily, so snips will do it. I just need to make sure I hold it taut so that... There we go. All right, so this is going to go here. This is dry now, so I can pop my dimensionals. Remember the ones I can't find? <laughs> No, it's all right, I've got the other packet. One on each end and one in the middle so we don't sag because no one likes to sag. Shopping for a new car, Cindy. Ooh, that's exciting. Anybody else doing something exciting? Is it just time for a new car or are you treating yourself? All right, so just like that. And our little blushing bride ribbon, which is just a little bit darker there. It actually does work quite well. This slightly darker tone. And I am going to use glue dots to stick that on. So let me grab them. Oops. There's one. Put the, this is the best way to use glue dots. Pop whatever it is you want to stick onto the glue dot, press really hard, and then gently take it off. And the glue dot will come along with it and stick perfectly wherever you, whatever it is that you want to have stuck on there. And there we go. Finished card. How quick and easy is that? Super, super simple. But I love the way these flowers come out from behind the die. It just seems to work really, really well. And there we go. Now I have another one. Looks like I have to go to a lot of weddings or a lot of anniversary. You give a lot of anniversary cards because to me that's what these look like. They can be really nice. And see how this looks quite different from depending on which ribbon you're using. But this ribbon is divine. Really lovely. Oh, are you going to do the drive around Australia thing, Cindy? upgrading the car oh thanks Deb I'm glad you like them so yeah so we did do some nice cards tonight we've done this one just move these out of the way and we did uh, this one with the lighter but as I think somebody said um, some people I think it's personal preference some people probably prefer the darker leaves and some people might like the, the softer ones but there we go there's our cards tonight there we go guys